Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. I'm glad you're joining me today for our video series. We have lots of videos out there and you'll find them on our website. And our website is www.letstalkdementia.org and you can also find them on Roku, on Amazon Fire Stick, um, you can find them on YouTube and we post them on our Facebook page so you can find everything we have also right there on our website. Write me with any questions or comments you might have. If you've got a situation going on in your world and you're just wondering what to do about it, then write me, carol at letstalkdementia.org. Um, I would love to hear from you. The more often I hear from folks, the more people I can help because then I can take your question and turn it into an episode that's going to help somebody else. And if you like, you might be a guest on our show, so I'd love to hear from you. But if you just want to talk privately, we can do that too. Whatever. A special thank you for to our sponsors of today's show, HD Imports. I've got all these labels coming over my face. There, that's better. HD Imports. They are located in Rock Hill, South Carolina, wonderful York County area. Their phone number is 803-985-0985. If you live anywhere near that part of the world and you own a Hyundai, Honda, Toyota, Kia, or Acura, and you need to maintain it well, they're not cheap cars. you got to keep them in good shape. And they are the people for that. They've been the mechanic of choice for our household for many years till we moved to Florida. But we still love those folks and how honest they are with the work they do. Give them a call. Tell them Carol sent you. Don't forget that part. Beth Crosby, Editor Beth. You can find her at www.editorbeth.com. She is my editor for everything I produce. Does a wonderful job. And you'll be glad you're using her for that written word that you've got out that's got your name attached to it, including your website. Think about your website. She needs to be looking at that. National Association of Veterans and Families, 800-352-2919. Um, you can also find them at navf.org, and I hope you will check out these folks. Well, today I want to tell you about a two-year-old who has dementia. Oh my goodness. It, does that just make you want to kind of toss your cookies. <laughs> it's just sick. It really is. Now, I did not tell you I was going to tell you about a two-year-old had Alzheimer's. It's not what I said. I said a two-year-old who has dementia. And if you've listened to this show more than about 20 minutes, you've learned that there is a difference between dementia and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a disease that causes dementia. So there's lots of reasons we can have dementia. In fact, there's over 200. One of those reasons is called San Filippo Syndrome, otherwise known as childhood dementia. And I recently read an article about a mother whose name is, Re is Rebecca. She lives in the United Kingdom. And the article said she received words that no mother ever wants to hear. You know, you, you say the very worst thing in the world is to get the phone to ring at night and scare you to death and then there's nothing there. No, that's not the worst thing in the world. The worst thing in the world is the phone to ring and the news on the other end be really, really bad. That's way worse, isn't it? Then you would wish there had been nobody on the other end. And especially if that news has anything to do with our children. I only have one child, and my heart, every time she leaves the country, they travel a lot, my heart drops about four or five inches, waiting for her to get home. I just think about it when she's driving to work. But much less getting word that your two-year-old has the disease called San Filippo Syndrome, otherwise known as childhood dementia. Well, Rebecca knew that something was wrong with her child. Her son's name is Reggie. She'd taken him to several doctors in his short two years, and doctors thought it was autism. Um, she'd taken him to the children's hospital, and one doctor in the process had treated another child for a disease called mono, mucopolysaccharide, or MPS. And she recognized similarities between that child with MPS and Reggie, the little boy. She diagnosed him with type 3 mucopolysaccharide, type 3 MPS, otherwise known as childhood dementia or San Filippo syndrome. So with MPS, uh, there is a missing enzyme in the brain that controls the buildup of a toxic sugar that builds up in the brain. So his brain is experiencing progressive damage, which is leading to dementia at 2 years old. Now I know what you're going through as a caregiver for your loved one with dementia. They may even have early onset and be in their 40s or their 50s. That is horrific. Truly, I've not walked that journey. I cannot imagine what you're dealing with. The dementia that I'm familiar with was with my mama who had late onset and it was horrible. It really was. But this mama at 
has this wonderful little son that from birth she began to see things where something wasn't right and now at two he's been diagnosed with this um, his mom Rebecca says there are three stages for the disease and he's in the second stage where he's hyperactive he's nonverbal he doesn't sleep he has um, behaviors that are hard to deal with some of that sounds kind of normal doesn't it but not to the degree that she's dealing with it the third stage is the final stage um, and he's in the second stage but the third stage is further deterioration and they don't have much time left and the body begins to shut down there's no hopeful outlook for this disease and as I said compare that to Alzheimer's whereas with Alzheimer's there is no hopeful outlook for it we don't have a cure for it there's no cure for San Filippo syndrome either but the life expectancy is most likely longer for that individual with Alzheimer's than with a child that has San Filippo syndrome. Rebecca said she didn't cope well at first, but then she remembered that she had two other children that needed her, and so now she is an advocate for finding a cure for the disease to try to help, Rebe uh, help Reggie have as much of a life and as good a quality of life as he can have. And that's what this show is all about. It's about helping you in your caregiving journey, in your life, in your world, to have the best quality that you can have while you're in the midst of this caregiving journey so that when you get to the other side of it, as I presently am, knowing that my mom is in heaven, I can say I did the best job I could do. I wish some things had been better or different, but even in the midst of that, I did what I could do. And that's where Rebecca is with Reggie. She's trying to make the most of every minute she has with this little fella. And realizing that while you try to teach your children new things and help them grow and learn and experience new things as they build stepping block upon stepping block upon stepping block in their mind and their brain to become the person that they were born to be, that's not going to happen with him. I truly cannot imagine what that feels like him feels like for her she says I want to make the most of him while he is with me and give him amazing memories while he can recall them there's no point in me falling apart well she's got a lot of truth a lot of gospel that's what they say in the south now that's gospel that'll preach and that's the way we all need to be there's no point in us falling apart now that doesn't mean you're not going to have days where you have a segment of that day a portion of that day where you just kind of you fall apart you lose it you're just not your good caregiving self that's okay because if you hold all that in your head's going to explode and i told you you're not going to look good with flames coming out the top of your head you got to let this go then you've got to pull up your big girl panties and get on with it and get busy with that that process of dementia caregiving and get on with life not just dementia caregiving but life and you have a responsibility to yourself to take care of your life of you and what's going on in your world yeah it's hard to do isn't it it's easier for me to sit here and tell you that because I am on the other side of that journey I am not actively caregiving my husband is for his brother um, not real, really active because he does live in his sister living and he's doing very well, but he does still call him five or six times a day. Sometimes just tell him what he had for lunch, what he had for supper, and how many times he'd been to the bathroom. Important information we need to know about everybody we know. No, we don't. <laughs> but it is um, it's still important that you take care of yourself. So take some time to do that, okay? Uh, we've been talking on all these shows a lot about how important eating right and exercising is. You cannot, you cannot downplay that in your world. Give yourself time to get outside and move and get your muscles, get your arms and legs moving and move your arms and legs in a way that gets your heart rate up and then you'll go back in and you'll be a better caregiver. I know it's difficult. Please try to find time to do that, okay? Do that for me. Then I'll know I've accomplished something by having this show. Well, I thank you for joining me, and I hope that in this process of your dementia caregiving that you will learn something that makes your caregiving journey easier. You can write me, carol at letstalkdementia.org, and be sure to check out our Amazon best-selling book when you're at our website, Let's Talk Dementia. Thank you for joining me. Blessings and smiles on your day. Now go give your L.O. a hug and tell him Carol said hello. Bye-bye.